Hello, hello. Happy today. Welcome back to the podcast. Today we have Tracy Pleshcourt on the show, and she is the founder of Self Made You and host of Secrets of the Self Made podcast, which helps men and women create self made wealth and wellness through life coaching. Tracy has mastered and now teaches the critical skills necessary to manage your mind and overcome any obstacle, including overeating, over drinking, time management, career, and relationship changes. Just a few years ago, Tracy was a successful advertising executive, uh, stifled by the rigorous time-consuming demands of the corporate world. She traded in her 20 years of advertising to pursue her real passion, life and weight loss coaching. Tracy is a student of her own work and has stopped overeating, over drinking, and created a multiple six-figure business while mastering metabolic health. Today, Tracy coaches people all across the country who want to become a student of themselves and do some transformational work. Tracy dedicates her work to ambitious lifelong learners, yearning for answers, and seeking a better way to create the results they desire and deserve. She instills confidence and a call to action that leads to unlimited wealth and wellness. I wish I had like a party horn that's like, burr, 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 burr. welcome to the show. <laughs> that's such a great bio. I freaking love you already. And I've been following Tracy on Instagram for a little bit, and I'm so excited to have you on the podcast. Tracy, thank you for being here. How's it going? It's so good. And I'm so excited to be here as well. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I think we have so much to cover and so much value to provide for those listening today because all the stuff that I read in this bio and just what we talked about before really like overeating, over drinking, navigating difficult relationships. Um, that's all the stuff that is part of being, you know, in the arena of life and the stuff that we are all say, yeah. working to navigate. And so yeah. I feel like, um, yeah, we could talk about this forever and I'm just excited to, uh, dive right in. So for those, I mean, you have your experience, like I read, you know, of just, you know, it, that's how it always happens, right? It's like, we have this experience of pain and we transition, change that, alchemize it into something that we can help others do. And so what's that journey been like for you? And what have you learned the most in your own yeah. journey and like helping other others navigate that, that, that real shit, right? That real shit yeah. that we talked about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If you're a human walking the face of this earth, no doubt you have come up against problems. You've come up against obstacles. You've at points in you know time you've you've decided on goals that you want to achieve whether you have achieved them or not i think we can all relate to those kind of experiences and um i would say through my own life experience from being here for 50 years i never felt very equipped in how to solve my own problems i said i think mm. bottom line london when you i mean i think that's like such a good question like what drew you to this? I mean, I could give you a million different answers, but if I'm really like diving deep and thinking about that, it's truly because I did not feel equipped to solve my own problems. And so I was a, you know, I was just a serial, like looking for something outside of me. Like I was always looking for those silver bullets um, that, you know, easy button. And that was true in my weight loss efforts, in my effort to stop over drinking and trying to heal the relationships in my life. So, um, you know, growing professionally, I always thought that that existed outside of me. And I now know that, you know, it, it has everything to do with how I'm feeling in regards to how I actually show up and do things. And so, most coaches, most weight loss programs, most people that you hire to help you navigate a relationship or um, climb up, you know, your professional ladder will give you a list of things and say, here's what you need to do. And, you know, make your way down that list and check those boxes. And I want to offer that there is a better way and a way that creates a sustainable change that I think we often overlook. And if you are somebody who can relate to being kind of that serial, you know, looking outside of you to solve your problems, I want you to just consider that there is a different way that you maybe have not yet tried. 
And that starts with understanding how you have gotten the results in your life that you've experienced. And when you start there, it seems a little cumbersome, but I promise you it takes all of about five minutes. But that is the launching point to really understanding yourself, accepting yourself without judgment. And there is where you're going to get some huge mileage, some huge traction in creating what it is that you really desire. Mm, I love that. I love that. I'm always taking notes for those watching the video. Um, I'm always like taking notes as I'm listening and absorbing because yeah, there's so much that what you said, and I sometimes call it the chronic starter where it's just like, you're chronically like getting excited about something outside of yourself. The next chat, like the next thing to spark that, um, is kind of the way that I mentioned it. And you said looking for that easy button or just kind of that, you know, fix all solution. And I mean, I think we'll probably be talking about this till the day we die. If we continue to talk about uh, life coaching and rewriting the rules for yourself and all of those things is um, leaning more into what I hear you saying is like finding that purpose, that driver. And it seems like, you know, too, in your, in your bio, when we read it and what I hear a lot from really amazing people, which is why I love the podcast and love these conversations is really that like pivot towards purpose, that moment where you're like, wait a second, like, I need to pivot and change. I might need to rewrite the rules or write them from scratch for me because I wasn't taught this in school or all these different types of skills. And so um, in that process, in that pivot for you, I'm assuming you learned so much, felt through so much that you then get to use um, with your clients and get to use with the people that you're, you're helping figure out how to navigate it themselves, right? It's always nice to have a guide to give us that perspective and to help us yeah. see the water when we're the fish, which is what I love the most about life coaching is just, yeah, safely navigating and pulling back some of those layers. And so when making your pivot and when you see people making the pivot that you work with, what would you say is super critical or foundational to what you teach and coach? Because- when I think of the pivot, I think of athletics because my dad is a coach and was a coach. And I think of the cleats you wear in softball and soccer where you like sink, you root down and you really like, you get your stance, you have your knees bent, your core activated, things in play and you make that shift and you have this really powerful driving force when those, let's say, cleats are in the ground, if you will. So what are the spikes or the cleats that root, help you root down and help your clients root down to make that change? Because it's hard to make a pivot. It's hard to switch, right? But it depends on how we look at hard things and challenges in general. So what's critical in your coaching process that lo those listening today can really, you know, see if they have it or they haven't found it yet? Yeah. Yeah. So I would say the way you get grounded and ready to kind of launch towards whatever it is that you want, whether that's overcoming something or creating something, the way that you really ground yourself is by understanding how you got to where you're at right now. So wherever you're at right now, you're either in this place of wanting to overcome something or wanting to create something. And what is so different in the way I teach it is that you have to understand how you got to where you're at right now. Okay. So like I said, that's very different than here's what you're going to do from here on. Right. We're going to kind yes. of look backwards and understand how did you get the experience or the result that you have right now. And the reason why we do that, or the reason why we invest the time and the energy into that is because that makes your like, your mind math is, is what I call it, your think, feel, act process, it makes it so relative. It, it makes it so applicable. So I could sit and teach all darn day the this concept, but if I don't put your exact situation, your exact circumstance into that mind math, it's not going to be as you know, applicable. You're not going to learn it. I'm going to be a talking head and it's not going to be meaningful, but we learn through applications. So that's a long way of answering your question. But if somebody had, um, 
let's just say weight. They felt like their weight was the biggest yeah, problem in their life. Let's definitely go into what would be the biggest problem. And you said like getting people what they want. So when people come to you, what are their problems? What do they want? And let's maybe walk through your mind math on um, a typical, I don't want to say typical, but like a very um, common problem or regular issue that you see people coming to you with. Yeah. Okay. We'll just use weight. Um, cool. Honestly, what we teach is people how to solve their own problems. It's first like take the responsibility for your unintentional results and your intentional results. Mm -hmm. So that's what, and to me, that's what it means to be self-made. Um, we teach people how to become self-made through teaching them how to take this responsibility. You have a brain that part of it is really set to keep you safe, to really keep you alive, right? It's the primitive part of your brain. It's really focused on survival. And then you have this other part of your brain that doesn't get used as much because you have to intentionally trip the trigger of it. And that's actually your prefrontal cortex. And I like to call it your prodigy brain. So at Self Made You, we use the terms primitive and prodigy brain. Your primitive brain is active a hundred percent of the time. And so we need to see how our primitive brain, when it's not actively being managed, how it kind of runs away with the show and creates these unintentional results for us. Often those results are negative. They're things that we don't like. So let's just say we find ourselves being 10 pounds overweight. So I want my clients, our students to understand how did you create that result? And yes, you created that result. It was unintentional. So we're not, we're not trying to cast blame. We're not trying to cast judgment. We're simply asking you to take the responsibility, not in a condemning way, but in a control, in a way to retain control, way to contain, retain power. So you created that. And so that's what we use this mind math formula for, to just show you in black and white how that actually was created. So where I have this equals, that's your result. Let's just say that said 10 pounds overweight. So we know that there were actions, there were behaviors that led to that weight gain. But if we look beyond that, if we keep reverse architecting, we know that those behaviors were triggered from a feeling. So what was it that you were feeling? Was it deprived? Was it entitled? That had you diving in to a sleeve of Oreos or opening up a bottle of wine every single night at seven o'clock? Like, what is that feeling that has you doing those actions? Because without understanding that, you cannot solve the root cause. And that is what's going to create sustainable change is going to the root cause. So once you can like put your finger on, this is what I'm feeling. And it requires you to get really honest with yourself. And most people are scared to look at that. But like I said, when you have this formula and you know that this formula is unfolding only because you have a primitive brain that actually has a purpose of keeping you safe. Now you don't have to identify as that. You don't have to judge yourself. We all have that part of our brain. But when you see how it unfolds in black and white, you can interrupt it. And instead of reacting from those thoughts and those feelings, you can respond. And when you respond, you start creating from intention. So when you're reacting from your primitive brain, you get very unintentional results and you don't have to make that mean anything about you. That doesn't mean you're broken. That means that you have a primitive brain that just simply isn't being managed. That's all. And so 10 pounds overweight, maybe it's every single night you end the evening before going to bed with a bowl of ice cream. Maybe you are sitting in front of the TV for two hours every single night to take the edge off. Maybe um, you're not planning your meals. Maybe you're eating high carb. Like those are all the reactions that are happening very unintentionally, very subconsciously. Feels like it's happening very habitually because you're feeling entitled before, because you're feeling broken 
And why are you feeling that? So we go one more step up. What's the thought that is triggering that feeling? That is what we want to solve for right there. We want to understand what is that thought that I've never, ever questioned until now, until I've been able to actually see it. And what would that, be, what would be some common thought patterns that you've seen your clients identify? I'll never be able to lose weight. Weight loss is unavailable to me. Like permanent weight loss is unavailable to me. Um, this is hard. Um, this won't work for me. Like those are what about like I would say, I'm exhausted and I deserve this. Like especially I think too with the some of the thoughts can be like rooting for some of the unempowering behaviors. I think too when it comes to food and drinking. Do you see that too? Being like, oh, I deserve this. Oh, I, I worked so hard today. I did a work like almost yeah. Um, unempowering, self-enabling kind of. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so those are those subconscious thoughts that we are, it, it becomes a neural pathway because we've thought these thoughts so long that our, our primitive brain loves to be efficient. It loves routine. It loves habit. And it doesn't question that thinking. So do you really deserve this? Is this really what you want? Like if you really slow down and you actually question that primitive brain thought, you will get a different result, but nobody slows down and actually questions it. Nobody wants to look at their thinking, right? But I just would implore you. I would say too, or doesn't realize it's available to them to think about what they're thinking about until sometimes they do this work and you're like, they're like, yeah, I'm just feeling like stuck, like some, you know, and then you're like, oh. I didn't realize like examining my thoughts was like an option until I realized it. And I love, for those of you listening, well, first of all, Tracy's doing like such a beautiful job describing um, what we are also able to see if you're watching the video and you have this whiteboard behind you and there's a list, like kind of like you would number things on a line and it's TFR and then plus and equals. So from the way we were talking about it, it's almost as if we were working bottom up. Am I right? That's right. And so if you guys are listening or watching and you're writing this down, can we one more time go through what the, I guess the equals is the outcome of where you're at now. And then what would be the uh, pause, what would be the plus, like the, the rewards you're currently getting from it? It's all of the reactions that you're having, the behaviors that you're doing, the actions or the inactions, those added up actually equal the result or the experience that you're having. Cool. And that's where you said the responsive, when you have that list of actions and inactions, that's where we get to have that responsibility for your unintentional results is what you mentioned of kind of like, okay, what I'm doing and what I'm not doing is contributing to this. And unless I appreciate it and love it and learn from it, I'm going to be using that as a hammer my whole life anyways, you know, so to keep me down. Okay, cool. So then as we go up to the R, then F, then T, one more time, can we like Yeah. So if you have, so if you have a thought that, um, work is hard or even losing weight is hard and, um, I've never been able to lose weight. That's a thought. It might actually be a belief. You've thought it so many times that you really truly believe that. And that thought is what makes you feel something. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what you, you name that feeling. So defeated or inadequate or skeptical, like what is the feeling that that belief actually generates in you? This is very, very specific to your experience. So you have that thought that generates that feeling that then has you showing up and reacting in such a way that gets you a result of being 10 pounds overweight or unable to lose weight. And so this just becomes a black and white mathematical formula of how you create what it is that you're experiencing. And that's what allows you to take the responsibility when you can see, yes, that's what I'm thinking. That's what makes me feel this way. That's why I show up in this way. And you can kind of, you know, separate yourself. You don't have to identify 
as you know being bad you can just see it unfold as math that's what your primitive brain creates for you when it's when you're unintentional when you're unaware of what's actually happening so this whole exercise is meant to slow you down so you can see how it's unfolding so that you can go yeah that is what's happening and take that responsibility so that you are in control so that with intention all you do is tweak one of these variables and you will get a different result just like one plus two equals three you change a variable you do get a different result if you have one plus three you've changed a variable now you've got four you've got a different result it's just math and so we want to trip the trigger of our prodigy brain and come up with a new thought the variable that we want to change in your mind math is the thought and how do we come up with something else in the context of the same circumstance your weight that is believable you have to be able to question it questioning it is going to come from your prodigy brain which a lot of us don't know how to trip the trigger of yeah i um oh, i love all this stuff so much and i when i am taking notes on our conversation because i love yeah it helps me learn and process and when i flip it over i was listening to um a talk with Dr. Amen, who does the brain scans mm -hmm. and he talks about, we need to nudge our brains. Like we have to figure out a way to like have the intercepting thought in the morning when we wake up to like, like that, like it's almost, I think about too, like the habitual thought wanting to take its normal parking spot. And then in comes that new like thought we want yeah. to implement. And it's like, nope, I'm going in that parking spot. Like yeah. get out of yeah. here. And he talks about like nudging our brain in those directions. And I'm a huge, um, yeah, I love working on exactly what you mentioned is like thinking about what we're thinking about and choosing yeah. to reconstruct those thoughts and see the outcome change yeah. as well and being able to like interrupt and respond. And I think, yeah, I wanted to highlight that or I'm sharing it because I think people don't really realize the weight of that and how helpful that is. And you know, it can be so simple at times in terms of our thoughts. And sometimes we just change like one or two words. It's like blah, blah, blah is. And it's like, we can just kind of swap in for a new meaning. Uh -huh. And you also yeah. mentioned it being believable. So to what extent do these new empowering thoughts need to be believable? But also like, I think there's a bit of like, uh, my boyfriend will often say, and I love how he says, be it until you see it, where you're like stepping into a new em empowering thought process that also sounds, feels a little bit foreign or funky. So yeah. how do we help people like own that new thought process? I know yeah. a lot of it has to do with repetition, right? And yep. what else? Like, what else do you coach on with that? Yeah, I, I would say, you know, <laughs> I can't stress enough that it has to be believable. If you're stepping into something that you aren't yet believing, you probably will feel a little skeptical. And if we've got skeptical right here, just think about how you show up. Like, what mm -hmm. do you do? What don't you do when you're feeling skeptical? So I can't stress enough how important it is that you, like, you reveal, you find the believable thought that you can really rally behind. So that might look like it's possible that I haven't yet learned how to lose weight and keep it off. It's possible that there is a way that I haven't yet been taught. Versus like, nothing works for me. I've tried everything. It's not gonna. So being able to have that, that be this the time thought. Kind of yeah. Or, or, you know, if we're being really intentional and like, you're going to, you know, fake it until you make it like this time's going to be different. Right. Like one of those really like raw, raw, motivating, supposedly quote unquote, motivating thoughts. Like, I don't know about you, but if that's not believable to me, I'm going to feel skeptical. My brain's going to go. Yeah. Just like all the other 800 times I've tried. Right. So I like personally, what really works well for me is, is it possible? 
is it possible? Or giving myself a little bit of grace and recognizing like my humanness in regards to the primitive brain thoughts that I've always reacted from. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I think all of your listeners should consider is when you hear the words, you got to do the work. <laughs> like this is going to be work. I want you to just think about like, what is it that you're anticipating? You're anticipating somebody handing you a list of a whole lot of actions. And a lot of us have an immense amount of willpower. And we're like, yeah, we'll just, we'll grind our way through it. And we think about the actions that we're going to have to take and the consistency through which we're going to have to take those actions. And I want to just suggest to you that this has absolutely nothing to do where the level of work that I'm asking you to do is to reveal the thought, reveal the belief that you're actually operating from. That's the only work. When you identify what it is that you're believing and how that belief makes you feel and you see how you are showing up because of that feeling, it changes everything. It changes everything. And so the work is not a list of actions that you have to grind your way through. The work is simply understanding what is the belief that you're operating from and how do we poke holes in that belief? Because if it's coming from your primitive brain, it's probably not true. It's probably very dramatic. And that is what has us reacting and creating without intention. It's not your fault. It's just that you've never, you've not been taught how to look at that, how to poke holes in it. So for everybody who's thinking this is so hard, it's not hard. It's just a different way. And it's actually so much easier because the actions come in an organic way. You don't have to try to show up and do these actions. If you are feeling something, you'll organically show up doing. So the work, the real work is revealing what thought you're actually thinking that's driving the current result and what thought can you believe that's believable right now that you can shift your focus from so that you feel different, so that you show up different. It's just math. Does mm, that I make sense? That. Yeah, it's so great. And it's so cool because um, people get to choose then when they get to those thoughts, which in my mind is like looking behind the curtain, right? It's like, oh, yeah. you didn't know that you had this like curtain to look behind really quick here. Let me show you. And you get to decide what to do with it, right? Like they get yeah. to decide if they choose to continue that loop of the same unempowering thoughts, getting the result, doing the same thing, expecting something else. Right. Yeah. And I feel like, um, from doing the work myself and then also working with clients as well. It's like, that's the whole point is just like, come over here, like look behind here, like look what we have access to. And then allowing people to make that um, mean and become exactly what they want it to be. So I think that's really cool and really beautiful. Um, I wanna touch on the F a little bit in feelings because I think what was, and I've shared, um, or like I think about this a lot where I remember, first diving into navigating my feelings even more and feeling at first, <laughs> I thought I was going to feel overwhelmed exploring more words for feelings, more describing ways for how I was feeling and identifying that. But it mm -hmm. ended up being so amazing and so empowering. And I love being able to distinguish between things instead of grouping it between like I'm angry or sad and not that there's anything wrong with that verbiage, there's just a lot of other really cool words. And so it was really empowering to um, read books for me, like uh, Nonviolent Communication by Marshall Rosenberg or Atlas of the Heart, uh, Brene Brown, because they have pages of describing words of feelings. And so do you feel that way? Do your clients feel that way more empowered by being able to identify and pinpoint those emotions? Because I find that so powerful. Absolutely. Absolutely. When we're working through this mind math, 
it's really important that we're very specific. This mind map works really hard for us when we're as specific as possible. So I really get to that root thought. I, as a coach, am trained to pull those thoughts out from you. So often a client will give me a very surface level thought and I can really dig deep and pull that deeper belief from them. Mm -hmm. But the same is true with the feelings. Like I really want them to explore what it is that they're feeling and not give me one of the five basics, you know, happy, sad, angry, mad, and, you know, I'll, like, let's really dig in and understand what you're feeling. And that's important for a lot of different reasons. So many people will just like flippantly say, you know, I'm fine. And they'll kind of live into that. And let's like explore what it is that you're really feeling so that you can live into that. And so, or so that we can solve for that if that's problematic for you. So we do a lot of work on feelings. And what I have been sharing with you today, the mind math and how to go from seeing the unintentional results and then creating intentional results that is just one tool. Like the mind map is a tool to help you feel something different, to help you create something different. I'll tell you what, another great tool to have in your back pocket is processing feelings. Because if you don't learn how to process unwanted feelings, they just wait for you. <laughs> they don't go away. They just keep waiting to be processed. Feelings, emotions, are meant to be experienced. That's how we experience life is through feelings. So there is an, a huge spectrum of emotions. They are not good, they are not bad. They, you know, even the unwanted emotions have a purpose. They provide contrast, they provide context. If you didn't experience unwanted feelings, you would have no context for the wanted feelings. So they have a purpose, but understanding when they are and are not working for you, when they are and are not serving you is really important to know. And then how, if they're not working for you, how do you process it instead of buffering it or running away from it or doing what I just showed you, just shifting to another feeling? Those are great tools, but if processing it is what you really need to do, you have to understand how to do that as well. So yes, I think there is so much good work to be done on the F line on the feelings for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I love, I love the F line. I've been hanging out there a lot and I just think it's for anybody listening that is maybe a little bit scared um, of exploring the F, the F line, the feelings. I was too. So I was like, oh my gosh, I already love words and communicating. How am I possibly going to remember more words? To just, and I just remember being so at ease when I was reading some of those. So hopefully somebody listening can feel that same type of ease that we kind of described. Um, mm -hmm. So tools to process certain emotions. One thing that I learned early on um, and I know we've talked a little bit about, uh, you know, weight loss and like, that's the clientele that you're working with too. And I know in, in my experience personally, I was using exercise as a tool to process like all emotions, right? So it was like doing the most. Mm -hmm. Now I've learned that exercise and movement, even short bursts of movement is very helpful to process feelings and emotions, um, surrounding anxiety or feelings of angst after I have sat with them and considered where they might come from and learned from them. But I know that exercise for me is a helpful way to like physically process that particular emotion. And then of yep. course there's more nourishing processes that I love to process other emotions that historically I'd be like, I'm going to run, I'm going to run, I'm going to run, I'm going to do this. And then I felt my, found myself burnt out and overtrained, hormonal disarray, metabolic disaster, acne all over my skin, like a lot of reactions mm -hmm. from my body. Right. So um, from the weight loss perspective, maybe people aren't using other mechanisms, right? Other processing coping tools like food or lack of movement or um, right. other things. So what, yeah, 
that was just, yeah, my experience. And I love exercise as a tool to process certain emotions. And I love other more restorative activities to help process other ones. So yeah. what would you say about that? And how can we, yeah, I just use, I always want people, or I feel like the call to help people use exercise in a more empowering way. Cause I feel like sometimes we're running towards it too much or we're really running away from it too much because of some of our limiting beliefs or thoughts we might have surrounding exercise and stuff like that. So right. would you yeah. say on I that? would say, you know, I would say look at exercise as a tool mm -hmm. and you have to take a step back and always ask yourself, like, what is it that I'm trying to achieve? right? As if you were building something, what is it that I'm trying to achieve? Am I trying to um, nail these two boards together? Okay, so what's the tool that is going to be most appropriate? A hammer, but a screwdriver wouldn't be the most appropriate and wouldn't probably be what you would choose if you were to take, take a step back and assess, right? So it's always important to know what's going to be the right tool to pull out and use at any given moment. So if you're trying to um, create better sleep or you're trying to um, increase your flexibility or your mobility, right, or your heart health, then maybe exercise or running is the right tool. But maybe exercise is not the right tool in certain circumstances. And maybe it's just tracking an emotion. Maybe it's just naming an emotion. Maybe it's just gaining clarity on what it is that you're actually feeling. I would always recommend starting there. Let's name it. Like to your point, London, get a list of emotions. I love Atlas of the Heart, Brene Brown's book, because she offers a plethora of emotions that you can peruse and find the one that you're actually experiencing. And then where I would go from there is track it. Where does it exist in your body? Are you feeling it in your chest? Are you feeling it in your hands? What does it feel like? Is there a color? Is there a temperature? Is there a texture? Like really connect to that emotion. That's another great tool. Breathing is a great tool. Like mm -hmm. big, deep breaths from your belly is a great tool tool when you are feeling an emotion that needs to be processed. Um, emotional freedom technique, EFT and tapping is another great tool. Like there are so many tools to process emotion. Exercise is just one, but it might not be the right one all of the time. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I think I mean, maybe there's some tools out there that are like breathing, for example, or breath work I love. And mm -hmm. I think that's like a all of the time tool. Like, I feel like you can use that for so many things, but for the most part, yeah, it is that being more meditation. well acquainted meditation. I love to, of course, I love that. It's like building your toolbox and then being well acquainted with your tools and using them. Right. It's like, we don't want certain stuff to get dusty, get rid of the stuff we're no longer using or use what's, uh, you know, have in your toolbox, what you feel like is most useful now and going back to those tools regularly. I love all the ones we've mentioned and um yeah meditation's a huge one breath work a huge one for me too because like i said it was like run and it was like literally the you know when we're in stressful situations a fight flight freeze yeah. uh facade even like i um would f like flight it'd be like run go do you know before even acknowledging before reading some of the words before you know and then deciding like okay this feeling's like hung out here long enough i know that this tool helps once i've learned from it process through it a little bit like this kind of gets my heart rate up and then things kind of go away there so i think it's helpful to to know our toolbox and continue to cultivate those yeah. uh tools and that's what i love about the coaching that we do is being able to help create that perspective shift and be like, Hey, have you looked over here? Yep. Psst, come over here. Like, have you, you know, and to, yeah. not, and to let people make kind of the meaning out of that once they discover yeah, yeah. new ways of doing things or just thought patterns they didn't ever recognize before. So I so appreciate yeah. this conversation and um, yeah, the work you're doing and your mind math process is so cool. So for those of you watching, you'll see this for those of you 
not to all I'll put in the show notes, like, um, you know, what it looks like. It's very simple yet. I think it's cool sometimes to have a visual. So, uh, mm -hmm. Tracy, where can we connect with you, um, on social media, website resources, anything you want to share with us, your podcast, I know as well, yeah. let us know how yeah. we can connect with you further. Yeah, I think like the, the one go-to place that will connect you to everything else is our website, selfmadeu.com. So it's uh, self, S-E-L-F dash made, M-A-D-E, and then the letter U.com. And I think that for anybody who wants to really explore a new tool to process a feeling, to get an understanding of why you're, you're creating the results in your life that you're experiencing, and how to create something different. We have the mind math tool and the step-by-step -step directions on how to use it for free on our website. So I would start there. It'll connect you to every social media platform that we're on, including our podcast. But that if I can um, share one thing that I know will really change lives, I would say it's this tool. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much, Tracy, for sharing and for your time today. And You're thank welcome. you guys so much for listening. Everything that Tracy mentioned, you can find in the show notes, uh, links and all those things too. Uh, thank you guys for listening and we'll see you at the next episode. Bye.